This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on groundwater resource management, challenges and the way forward. The participants are Himanshu Thakkar, water resources management expert and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. Himanshu ji, among all the natural resources of the country, groundwater resources is one of the vital, basic, fundamental resource which is uh, crucial for any and every citizen of the country. So, how do you see the management of groundwater resources in our country and what is the significance? Indeed, actually, groundwater is India's water lifeline and it has been so for more than two decades now. More than 90% of the additional water that we have used over the last two decades and more has all come from groundwater. More than two-thirds of irrigated area gets irrigation from groundwater. More than 50% of the urban or industrial water use comes from groundwater. And more than 85% of the rural water supply comes from groundwater. And with every passing day, our dependence on groundwater is going up. So it's indeed very vital resource for India's food security, water security and livelihood security. In fact, the government from time and again has been conducting these dynamic groundwater resources assessment and issuing reports regarding the same. Can you tell us something about this effort of the government? How does it help in more efficient groundwater resource management? The government has been doing surveys since 1980 and they have done some about seven to eight surveys so far. And latest one was released yesterday. Though the report is not yet in public domain, they have released some findings. This uh, assessment is very important, not only to understand the micro groundwater dynamics at the macro level, it's even more important to have the picture at the local aquifer level because, because the groundwater comes from aquifer and that's the primary source of water from groundwater. We need to understand what is the situation at aquifer level, to what extent water levels are going up or down, what is the storage volume available and so on and how it is changing. So while the macro picture is good to have, regulation and use is concerned, it's much more important to get the figures at the aquifer level and which should be available to the people on ground. So the communities who are using that groundwater, they should have that information. That's one part. And the other part is that we also, at the same time, while we try and understand the dynamics of the groundwater, we also need to understand what are the specific recharge zones for each aquifer. And then we need to see how we can increase the recharge from those zones, how we can protect those recharge zones. India is the world's largest user of groundwater by far. Even if you put together the amount of groundwater used by number two and number three, that is China and U.S., India's use is even bigger than addition of those two. But at the same time, you know, U.S. is much more advanced groundwater regulation system. For example, they have identified the groundwater recharge zones and they have declared them as protected areas because they understand that these recharge zones need to be protected to protect the groundwater recharge and they have restricted the activities in those zones. So we need to go very far in terms of the regulation of our groundwater use. Himanshu ji, can you uh, tell us about the key findings of Dynamic Groundwater Resources Assessment Report 2022 and uh, how do you see the road forward? So the key findings are that the water level, the total recharge has gone up and the use has actually reduced. And this is uh, slightly counterintuitive in the sense that, as I said, groundwater is our water lifeline. Its uh, use has been going up. But it's very important because it says that the water recharge highest since water use is lowest since 2004 and water recharge is, has been increasing since last three assessments 2017, 2020 and 2022. So these are very good findings in the sense that they seem to indicate that our recharge is increasing and our exploitation is reducing. But this is at the macro level. The way forward is that we need to disintegrate this information, make it available to the communities, enable them to manage their groundwater so that they, do, they can do it in a sustainable way along with the information about the cropping. So information is very good, but the report should be promptly in public domain for all the reports and they be available to the farmers at the community level. So in this direction, how important is the categorization of the assessment units? Now we hear about these categories, safe, semi-critical, critical, critical over-exploited and saline. Can you tell us something about this categorization and how is it used? 
the metro picture will tell you that we have 440 odd billion cubic meters of water and we are recharging uh, say approximately 239 billion cubic meters of water and so on but that really doesn't help because the real dynamics is happening at the aquifer level and when you actually categorize the zones according as you have said it gives you a better picture as to okay this zones is over exploited so here we need to reduce the use and at the same time we need to increase the recharge both the income needs to be increased and the expenditure needs to be decreased and similarly in other zones you know whether it's critical semi critical or and so on in safer zone while you don't need to restrict the use you need to ensure that at least recharge continues and in saline zone of course you need to see how you can reduce the salinity so for different zones your management systems will be very different your regulation system will be very different so it's very important that the detail you know the body is in the detail so we really need to understand at the aquifer level what is the situation and how we can improve the management at the aquifer level Machu ji is uneven spatial distribution of groundwater resources due to both natural and man-made reasons i mean wherever it is possible how can the common citizens how can the common local authorities how can the state governments and the central government help in improving the situation so there is a lot really need that can needs to be done right from the citizens level as you rightly say to the central government level different levels there are different responsibilities the central government and the state government needs to come out with uh, enabling policies uh, regulation systems institutions and law to ensure that the groundwater lifeline of india continues to sustain and for that restricting unnecessary unsustainable use increasing the recharge system protecting the recharge system enabling communities to understand their budget of available water and how much is recharged and how they can do both increase the income through increase recharge and reduce their expenditure through decrease exploitation all of this needs to happen at various levels the actual regulation has to happen at the aquifer level but for that the information system the institutional mechanisms the legal mechanisms the policies and the incentives and disincentives needs to come from right from the top so there are roles for each of the various levels of the governance so we have seen a lot of schemes which have come out from the you know central government like jal kranti abhiyan atal bhujal yojana pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana various water related schemes have come out and you feel that this is very crucial to making the lives easier for the people at the you know bottom the farmers the common men the people who are from the economically weaker sections we need a number of steps to take and some of the steps are being taken now but we are very very far in terms far from the curve that we really need to be at in terms of information system in terms of we are still mapping we have not yet still complete the complete mapping mapping of the aquifers that what is the the contour of the aquifer where the groundwater occurs what is the volume of water available there what is the depth of water that still is happening and that information needs to actually reach the aquifer level community similarly we need to have a regulation in place to ensure that unsustainable unnecessary use is not you know to give you one instance if you have a bottled water or a cold drink water factory siting of that is very important and lot of them use ground water so if they happen to if now that's very non essential use of water as far as the that particular location is concerned particularly in over exploited zones critical and sub critical zones such unnecessary activities should be avoided and instead such activities can be shifted to areas where there is sufficient ground water and they can be given the responsibility of ensuring that ground water is recharged by them in quantity more than they use similarly at the urban level you know we have huge establishments which has the space and the capacity to recharge the ground water but we aren't doing lot of that so while we are doing something some steps in terms of the actual information system institutional system legal systems incentives disincentives we are far from where we should be because as i said more than two decades groundwater has been our water lifeline and we are not really understanding the significance of this reality so the schemes that you have mentioned are very important and necessary but we need to go very very far and very very quick steps are necessary to ensure that our groundwater lifeline is sustained
So you feel that uh, initiatives like dynamic groundwater resources assessments, uh, these kind of preparatory exercises help uh, the government to focus more on areas which really require intervention on, can say, a very immediate basis? Absolutely. It can help you because, you know, in the government is doing it at the mass scale, you know, at the macro scale, where they have micro information. And that information, you know, through that information, one can identify that which are the zones that need immediate attention and what kind of attention that is necessary. And at the same time, we also need to put up institutions. We don't have a groundwater regulation system in place at all. So we need to quickly put that in place because the groundwater board is only bringing out data and reports and groundwater authority, unfortunately, working more like a, a licensing body. So this kind of reports can help, but provided that information that they gather along with the trend should be made available at the local level quickly so that at the local level, because it's, it's the regulation has to happen at the local level. Groundwater is a decentralized resource. You know, it occurs in the aquifer level, which is at the community level. And so at that level, we need the information, we need the institutions, we need the legal system in place and regulation in place to ensure that the sustenance of groundwater can be achieved. And also a groundwater uh, resource situation should always be kept in while, uh, let's say, choosing which crops to sow in a particular area or how to harvest uh, rainwater. I mean, rainwater harvesting can be a supportive uh, initiative uh, which needs to be given a bigger push. So both these are very important. Now, as far as the cropping pattern is concerned, decisions are generally very difficult at the farmer level because the farmer ultimately is not economically very strong person. He has to go by whatever crop he knows is going to give return. Until and unless, he, you know, for example, to give you an instance, Marathawada area in Maharashtra, is a very drought-prone area, but it's an area which has the maximum amount of sugar cultivation and sugar factories are there. Now, that's a very contradictory situation. But the farmer there will go for sugar cane, and even though the, it's a drought-prone area, because that's the crop that is giving him remuneration without risk. So until and unless the, from the government, there is a sufficient assurance, even if he goes, for example, the pulse is the cropping area in Marathawada or northern Karnataka or Kaveri Basin, so on, or Rayasima. And these areas, you know, for example, pulses and oilseeds are best crops, but they will go for it, farmers, only if they are assured that they will get equal or possibly better return from this change rather than, you know, water-intensive crop like sugarcane. It can help make decisions, but provided it is also club, you know, government needs to have the policies and incentives and disincentive system in place to ensure that this kind of transition from inappropriate water intensive to appropriate water saving crops, not only water saving crops, but water saving methods like system of ice intensification are taken up. Increasing digitization with uh, everybody having a bank account, a mobile phone, the agriculture also being modernized, uh, drones being uh, introduced, startups coming into the agriculture sector uh, to help farmers you feel that uh, we are on the, that path of progress which you are talking about uh, so that the farmers have enough adequate inputs to make their decisions? In terms of information, uh, in a good position, but though we need to improve in the terms of actually monitoring and forecasting of rainfall, we have a long, some way to go because, you know, that's very crucial information for the farmer. But a lot of the information is in place. The technology that you mentioned are also uh, available for use. The missing link in here, I feel, is that the enabling system needs to be available, you know, like this information about the aquifer level, how much water is recharged and how much is available to farmer. If the community gets to information, Information, information. There are examples, for example, in World Bank funded project in Andhra Pradesh. When the communities were told that, okay, your water budget and your aquifer water budget is this much, and with this much water, you can take these crops, you can't take these crops. When this information was given to them and they were themselves monitoring, the farmers were told to monitor their own aquifer through dug wells and they will take readings and recording that, okay, this year it is this much, last year it was this much. They were told, okay, this level means this much water. This information along with the cropping pattern and implications and incentives and these incentives are available to them in a very confidence-inspiring way, then they can take the right decision because 90% of the water still gets used in agriculture and that's where we need to focus and that's where livelihoods are majorly at stake also in the context of climate change. Manchuji, thank you so much for this discussion on various aspects of management and sustainable use of groundwater resources, which is one of the most valuable resources of our country. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
You were listening to a discussion on ground water resource management challenges and the way forward. The participants were Himanshu Thakkar, water resources management expert, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent.